Of the important data releases that we monitor each month as traders and investors, there are very few that we can directly see as having an impact not only on our market activity, but also on us as individuals too. Inflation is one of those data releases that can really represent a change in your personal situation. Or at least it can if the data being released is from a country that you live in. However, for this video, we'll be focusing on inflation as a market moving data release and how we consider this data release as a trader or investor, including how it's calculated and why it's so important. And we'll leave the economics related theoretical side for a separate video. So instead we're focusing on just the practical aspects that may affect our trading. This video is part of our series explaining the major economic data releases that move the markets where we've not only been looking at what each data release represents and how it's calculated but also how they all relate to each other and how they can be used to further understand what to expect from other upcoming data releases as well. So today, let's add inflation to that mix and understand how it slots into the puzzle. For this, we'll be looking specifically at CPI, the Consumer Price Index, since this is the most important and most followed measure of inflation. So let's get straight into it. Okay, CPI or Consumer Price Index is a monthly release which measures the prices consumers paid for goods and services in the economy and how these prices have changed compared to previous months. The best way to understand the way CPI is measured and in fact the way that I learned it when I was first studying economics is to think of it as this big shopping basket full of day-to-day -day items or as some people call it and you may have heard it as a basket of goods. This basket will include a range of items that are included in regular household spending, but there will be certain exclusions such as housing costs, which are generally not included in CPI, but may be included in other specific alternative ways of measuring inflation, but we're not going to get into those in this video. That'll be something for a future video when we get even deeper into the topic of inflation. With CPI, the specific items that are included in the index will vary depending on the economy. And some releases may even be split into different categories, such as, for example, in the US, in their version of the release, they've got it split into CPI U, which is for all urban consumers, which represents 89% of the population, and CPI W, which is for urban wage earners and clerical workers, which represents 28% of the population. Now, this basket of goods doesn't include every item we could possibly buy, because that wouldn't really be practical or possible. Like, you couldn't collect all of that data regularly. So instead, it just includes a sample of what we call representative items. For example, in the UK CPI release, there are 700 separate items and over 100,000 prices are collected for these. So it is quite a large sample size, although that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a perfect sample. Then the index is weighted to give more importance to certain items over others. For example, if you think about a rise in the price of petrol, that's going to be more important than certain food items because those can be substituted or they might not be essential for whatever you need to do, like traveling, you might need to travel to work, petrol price is going to affect that. Now, some people incorrectly assume that CPI is for essential items or as a gauge of cost of living, but this is not necessarily true. For example, the UK release includes the price of cigarettes, which is obviously not an essential item for most people. It also isn't intended to be showing a cost of living since people's day-to-day -day items are so different from one another. Instead, it should be used as a useful estimate of how inflation is affecting most people's spending needs. So let's put this all into perspective. Let's have a think back to the previous videos in this series so far and how inflation now relates to those other data releases. So in the first video, we looked at GDP, gross domestic product, and we understood that when more money enters the inner flow, this means that there's potentially more money going to companies, which in turn means they can employ more workers and raise their salaries and wages as well which of course ties in with the boom and bust cycle we discussed in our video on PMI, Purchasing Managers Index, and how PMI helps us to anticipate when this is likely to be taking place. Then, when we looked at NFP, non-farm payroll, and employment data, we saw that not only are the jobs numbers being reported, but also the increase or the decrease in wages. 
So we can use this to start seeing how much additional consumer spending may be likely to happen in an economy. So then going back to our understanding of GDP and boom and bust cycles, we know an increase in spending is likely to lead to inflation as prices of goods are increasing through the shift in aggregate supply and demand. Now, when inflation starts to rise, this can also lead central banks to taking action as well as they aim to keep inflation under control and within certain boundaries. So for example, the Federal Reserve in the US, at the moment they've got an inflation target of 2%. And a central bank will usually increase interest rates to reduce inflation in an economy. This is meant to discourage excessive borrowing since the cost of borrowing is higher, since the interest rates are higher, and it also encourages more saving as well both of which are going to result in less money circulating in an economy, leading to less spending and therefore a reduction in inflation. This means that central banks really follow CPI data closely. In particular, in the US, the Federal Reserve monitor CPI, PPI, which we'll discuss in another video, and the unemployment data to help make their decisions in a market. So because of this, inflation data can really move a market heavily, especially when it surprises against the expectations before the release takes place. Now, in general, a rise in inflation will lead to a bullish move in that particular currency based on the factors that we've discussed in this video and also considering the purchasing power of that currency. However, this will also depend on other contextual factors such as expectations of future action, or what has taken place in this more recent past, and also the general economic conditions at the time. So, of course, theoretically, we could say what is going to happen, but in reality, it may be slightly different depending on the context. So, those are the basics of CPI and inflation, which should now help you to see how it all links to the other aspects of the economy and the other data releases that we've already discussed in the previous videos. Now it's important to remember that these are just the basics that you should know as a trader, but we will also pick up on this topic in a future video to get a bit more advanced about other types of inflation, other ways of measuring it, and other situations we can experience in an economy that involve inflation. However, for now, we don't really need to worry about those. It will all come in good time. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. And why not now spend some time checking out the recent or upcoming inflation releases so you can slowly start to get to grips with how it's released, what it looks like, and when these releases come out for the economies relating to the assets that you trade. And I will see you in the next video very, very soon. Take care. See you.